years ago, my young niece called and announced that she had just had an apostrophe. <laughs> she meant epiphany, but I have loved the idea of having an apostrophe, maybe even an exclamation point, at the very least the occasional semicolon. And so I thought in the interest of our theme of learning today that I would share with you three apostrophes that have absolutely altered how I see the world, how I see myself in the world, and what is required of me. But I thought I would lay the groundwork by reading a brief memo from my second book, Fierce Leadership, a bold alternative to the worst best practices of business today which could easily have been titled A Complete Guide to the Fricking Obvious, <laughs> my opinion. <laughs> so, but my publishers would not go for that. So I just wanted to share this with you because it will lay a little groundwork. Um, congratulations, you are a leader. It's a heavy load, but someone has to do it. The primary focus of your organization is growth. To help in this regard, it is your duty to lead change, manage and motivate a multi-generational workforce, and execute initiatives that impact the top line and the bottom line simultaneously while delivering short-term results. <laughs> you must demonstrate agility, speed, inclusiveness, strategic acumen, and innovation, manage uncertainty and risk, and mitigate the impacts of globalization, offshoring, a recession, global warming, the price of oil, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you fail, darkness will cover the earth. <laughs> the stock value will plummet and chaos will reign. Hence a few suggestions, and there are 10. One, in order to hold off the forces of darkness, you must stay awake and locate your body parts. Two. Names and ideas will occur to you. The ideas you should write down and act on immediately, or if you don't have the authority, fight for. The names are of people you need to either make available to industry because they are sucking the joy and life out of everyone and everything they touch, or they are the people you should promote and to whom you should give heaping handfuls of freedom and encouragement to break the rules. Three, you will not single-handedly cause or prevent success. Surround yourself with people who model accountability, ferocious integrity, personal authenticity, the capacity to connect with others at a deep level, and, a, and the commitment to champion the common good over narrow self-interest. Four, your central function is to engineer intelligent, spirited conversations that provide the basis for high levels of alignment and collaboration and partnership throughout your organization and the healthier financial outcomes that go with those. Five, people may not wish you well, so pay attention to your emotional wake. You are not invincible. Be kind. Everyone is carrying a heavy load. Six, on the other hand, don't suck up to anyone ever or you will turn into a lick spittle and your soul will refuse to accompany you into the building. <laughs> Just keep describing reality from your perspective without laying blame and you'll be fine. Seven, don't even consider recommending a reorganization. <laughs> Anyone who requires more than re one reorganization over the lifetime of his or her career will forfeit a year's income, including bonuses and stock options, and possibly serve jail time. <laughs> Eight, do not under any circumstances tell a lie of either commission or omission. Do not stretch the truth, exaggerate, or make shit up to get out of trouble or to make yourself look good. Not only because that would be bad on many levels, but also because it will come back to bite you in the butt at the worst possible moment when you least expect it with the highest price tag on it and possibly appear on YouTube. <laughs> Nine, do not attempt to project different images depending on whom you're with. People can spot inauthenticity from 50 paces. Show up as yourself consistently. And 10, 
Bear in mind that while no single conversation is guaranteed to change the trajectory of a career or a company or a relationship or a life, any single conversation can. So take it one conversation at a time and make them fierce. Which brings me to my first apostrophe that I want to share with you. I had been working with CEOs of the kinds of companies without whose products and services you and I would not enjoy um, our favorite jeans on our favorite sofa, drinking our favorite coffee or glass of wine, playing Angry Birds. We would be naked in the woods, unwashed, breath reeking, trying to rub two sticks together, and other than trying to stay alive, bored out of our frozen brains. And at a point in working with them, when I'd had about 10,000 hours of conversations with them, either one-on-one -on -one or when they were together as a group, I happened to be reading Hemingway's The Sun Also Rises, in which a character is asked, how did you go bankrupt? And he's in a bar, everybody's been drinking, and he responds, gradually and then suddenly. <laughs> and my apostrophe was, our careers and our companies and our relationships and indeed our very lives succeed or fail gradually, then suddenly, one conversation at a time. Certainly, what gets talked about in a company, how it gets talked about and who gets invited to that conversation determines what's going to happen and what is not going to happen. Second apostrophe, the problem, the reason why so many of those conversations and meetings fall short of what we would all like them to be or some flat out fail is because so many of us suffer from some degree of alethophobia, which is an intense, illogical or abnormal fear of the truth. And while alethophobia may sound like a serious psychiatric disorder, I am convinced that at this exact moment in time, there are millions of people on this planet who are withholding what they really think and feel from someone at home or at work and are paying the price. In the fall of 2008, it took nothing less than the failure of Bear Stearns and Merrill Lynch and Lehman Brothers and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and AIG and Washington Mutual and the top US automakers and the subsequent devastation on Wall Street for executives and political leaders to acknowledge the seriousness of the situation. And yet, if you're like me, you were wondering at that time, how long had those fires been smoldering? What were they pretending not to know? And how did they literally go bankrupt? And I think they went bankrupt one failed, one missing conversation at a time with one another, with their customers, with the unknown future emerging around them. But let's get personal, because I don't think it's fair to put it all on the leaders. How many times have you told someone, your boss, a colleague, a customer, a family member, what you thought they wanted to hear? rather than what you were really thinking, or painted a false rosy picture of reality, glossing over problems, or pretending they didn't exist, sat in a meeting and watched somebody toss out that ceremonial first lie, and remained silent, or tossed it out yourself. If you're like most people, I think that there are plenty of times, in fact, I thought about calling this talk, Liar, Liar, Pants on Fire. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine what the world would be like if every time any of us told a lie, even a tiny one, our pants ignited? <laughs> it would either solve the problem overnight or we would need to carry personal fire extinguishers, which we might, because to cut us some slack, it would be easy to argue that our fear of the truth is not illogical, telling it like it is. Speaking ground truth versus sort of parroting the party line, which we know to be bogus, is no one's idea of exalting. In fact, it feels so alarming and risky that we are sometimes willing to put a for sale sign on our integrity in order to avoid it. 
After all, we've all witnessed a kind of violence. It could be a lost raise, a lost promotion, a lost seat at the table, visited on those who did speak their hearts and their minds, and it is raw. And yet, and yet, if a problem exists, it exists whether we cop to it or not, right? In fact, Carl Jung said, what we do not make conscious emerges later as fate. Gradually, 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 then suddenly. So I want to bust one of the worst, best practices of business and the one that I think single-handedly created the global financial meltdown. And I think a meltdown such as we have had is a terrible thing to waste, and yet I'm not convinced that we gotten it yet. I think we may start to repeat the same kind of stupid things that we've been doing for years and years and years. 